Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be making ham in a roaster oven. Now using this method definitely saves you space in your oven should you be cooking a large holiday meal. And here's how I'm going to do it. To start, I'm going to be using a 10 pound bone in fully cooked smoked ham. And I will be removing the rind that this ham comes with and I'm going to pat it dry. Now, if you're using the boneless variety of fully cooked smoked hams or the spiral cut hams, you'll need to adjust the cook time and follow the instructions that the ham comes with. And you could also dress the ham the way you like. I'm going to be using a Dijon mustard, brown sugar, honey, mixture to dress the ham with with pineapples and cherries sometimes i even like to add cloves into the ham but this is what i'm going to do today so to start i'm going to take a bowl and i'm going to add around a cup of dijon mustard the jar that i'm using is an eight ounce jar i only had probably six to seven ounces left but a cup of this will do now i'm going to add it right into my bowl and then i'm going to add a half cup of brown sugar I'm going to add a half cup of honey. I'm going to give this a good mix. I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of ground clove and a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Again, the ratios of those ingredients are up to you, or you can exclude them if you're not into the spiced ham flavor. And after I add my ground spices, I'm going to give this a mix. Okay, so once my mixture is combined, I'm gonna set it aside, and now I am scoring the exterior of the ham. I'm not going very deep, but I am going to do a crosshatch scoring of the ham. This will just help some of that sweet, sugary flavor get into the salty, smoky ham. Once I'm done scoring the ham, I like to sort of pull open the area that I cut into just to make sure the glaze can kind of seep inside the ham meat. Okay, so I'm going to use half of my mixture and slather the ham. I'm going to reserve the, the other half. By the way, I kind of failed to do this, but I do it later. You'll want to add the ham onto the rack that the roaster oven comes with. So I'm going to set aside the rest of that mixture for later. So now I'm going to add a half cup of brown sugar this is light brown sugar. You could also use dark if you have it. It's a bit more intense in that molasses flavor. So now I'm going to sprinkle the exterior of the ham and I'm going to dress it with pineapples and cherries. I'm going to be using two cans of pineapples to cover the exterior of the ham and several cherries. You can dress it the way you like. Here I have my toothpicks and now I'm just going to arrange it on the outside of the ham. Okay, so my ham is fully dressed, just the way I like. So now I'm going to take this over to my roaster oven and place it right in there. And because I already have it on the rack, it's a lot easier to transport without disturbing the exterior of the dressed ham. So right into my roaster oven, and I'm using a 22 quart roaster oven. That seems to fit perfect for turkeys or ham. So now I'm going to add four cups of water to the bottom of this pan. I find that if I don't add some sort of liquid to the bottom, it'll burn before the ham starts rendering juices. That's just a past experience. So with that reserved mixture that I made, I'm just gonna pour it all over the ham. Okay, so while I finish doing this, I wanna talk cook times. So as I stated earlier, if you are using a boneless ham or a spiral cut boneless ham, the cook time is going to vary. But basically what is recommended for the ham I'm using today is to bake at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 18 minutes per pound or until the internal temperature reaches 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to be cooking my ham for about 
to hours. And probably the last 15 minutes of cook time, I'm gonna crank up the heat to about 450 just to get a little browning and color to the ham. So this is an hour into the cook time. And as you can see, the ham is cooking quite nicely in my roaster oven. And at this point, you can baste it with some of those pan juices at the bottom. So now I'm going to work on a glaze for the ham. This is basically another way to add some sweetness to the salty ham. So here I have eight ounces of reserved pineapple juice from the canned pineapples I used earlier and four ounces of cherry juice. I've combined it, I've added it to a saucepan. Now I'm going to add one cinnamon stick. I'm gonna add around 10 to 12 whole cloves right into this mixture. I'm going to let this come up to a simmering boil and let it steep for about five minutes, just like this. And once it had time to steep and simmer, I'm going to remove the cinnamon stick and the whole cloves. And then I'm going to add more sweetness to this. I'm going to add a quarter cup of light brown sugar and maybe a quarter cup to a third cup of honey. I'm gonna sort of eyeball it. And after adding the honey, I'm going to bring the mixture up to a boil, almost where it's foamy and sort of reduced. This is just going to add an extra layer of sweetness and a nice thick glaze to the ham. And now that it's all frothy and foamy, I'm going to give it a mix, and this is ready for the ham. So my house smells like the holidays, and it's fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to pour the entire saucepan of that little glaze that I made onto the ham. And you can definitely add more honey or cook it a little bit longer to make it really sticky, but this works for me. So now that my ham is glazed, I'm gonna crank up the heat to about 450. I'm going to cover it with the lid and let it continue cooking for about 10 to 15 minutes. Just watch it, you don't want it to burn. But take a look at this. This ham is done and it's ready to be removed from my roaster oven and I'm going to let it rest for about 30 minutes before I cut into it. While my ham rests, I am going to remove the pan juices from the roaster oven or as much as I can ladle out. And I am using a little fat separator cup, so I'm going to pour in most of it, just pan drippings, and try to remove some of the fat that rendered from the ham. So once I have around two to three cups of it in my saucepan, I'm going to take it over to my stove and I'm going to reduce it. I like to reduce it by half to sort of thicken and intensify the flavor, but if you don't have time for that, that's fine. But basically these pan juices is what's going to keep the ham warm and flavor it with extra sweetness when you serve it. I love to do that. So now that my ham has rested, I'm going to remove my cherries and pineapples and don't discard them. My family likes to eat this. So I'm going to set them on the side of the platter because my family likes to get a little bit of ham and maybe a slice of pineapple. Okay. So my ham has rested, so now I'm going to slice into it. And I'm not going to slice the entire ham. I like to just slice what I'm going to serve and keeping the rest whole sort of makes it juicy when you slice into it later. It doesn't dry out. So I have around half of it sliced and I served it with the pineapples. So now I'm going to ladle on that reduced pan juice sauce, if you will, and serve. And this always makes it to my holiday table. It doesn't matter how I sweeten it. Sometimes I use different recipes. Sometimes I even like to use orange zest and orange juice on my pineapple ham glaze. But either way, it's delicious, it's salty, it's sweet, it's smoky, and most of all, it brings my family together. So I certainly hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.